During an official visit to Ulaanbaatar, India's Defense Secretary, Rajesh Kumar Singh, met Mongolia's State Secretary of Defense, Brigadier General Gangkwiag Devadorj, to enhance bilateral defense cooperation, especially in emerging technologies. Their talks coincided with the closing ceremony of the 17th edition of the India-Mongolia Joint Military Exercise, Nomadic Elephant, which took place from May 31 to June 13, where Singh praised both nations' commitment to regional peace. India has also deployed a 40-member army contingent, including women soldiers, to Mongolia for the Conquest Multinational Exercise, scheduled from June 14 to 28. The drills aim to build peacekeeping capabilities under UN Chapter 7, focusing on joint tactical planning, IED drills, patrolling, and casualty evacuation in a multinational setting. On Friday, India's External Affairs Minister S. Jai Shankar met French Minister Jean Noel Barat in Marseille for comprehensive talks aimed at strengthening bilateral cooperation. Both leaders agreed to intensify collaboration in defense, security, space, and civilian nuclear sectors through concrete measures. Jai Shankar conveyed India's gratitude to France for its firm condemnation of the recent cross border terrorist attack in Pahalgam and its continued support for India's right to self defense. Discussions also covered global and regional issues, including the Indo-Pacific, Ukraine and Middle East, where India reiterated its stance, favoring diplomacy over warfare. The dialogue extended to innovation, AI, counterterrorism, and enhancing people-to-people -people ties, with focus on education, business and mobility. India-France trilateral cooperation, including amic and partnerships with UAE and Australia, was also reviewed. India abstained from voting on a UN General Assembly resolution, critical of Israel's actions in Gaza, marking its third such abstention. The resolution, introduced by Spain and adopted on Thursday, with 149 votes in favor, condemned Israel's blockade, denial of humanitarian aid, and threats of forced Palestinian displacement, while also denouncing Hamas's terrorism. Explaining the abstention, India's UN envoy P. Harish emphasized the need for diplomacy and reiterated India's consistent position supporting a two-state solution. India also highlighted its humanitarian contributions to Gaza and stressed the urgency of a ceasefire and hostage release. In past votes, India similarly abstained on resolutions regarding Palestinian rights, maintaining that only peaceful dialogue can resolve the ongoing conflict. Following Israel's airstrike on Iran's oil fields and nuclear military bases, global oil connectivity with Iran has been disrupted, triggering a 12% surge in oil prices. Iran retaliated with strikes on Israel, and Israeli PM Netanyahu warned of intensified action. As tensions rise, global markets, including the stock market, have tumbled. U.S. President Donald Trump urged Iran to accept a nuclear deal, but warned of a large-scale regional conflict if it doesn't. Investors are fleeing amid fears of full-scale war. Crude prices spiked to over $76 per barrel, with experts warning of a possible 20% increase if Middle East tensions escalate. For India, world's third-largest oil consumer, this poses serious concerns. With over 85% oil dependency on imports from the Gulf, any blockade, especially near the Strait of Hormuz, could cause major inflation. Rising fuel costs would impact transportation, triggering a chain reaction of price hikes across all sectors. India has decided to equip all 62 of its Rafale fighter jets, 36 with the Air Force and 26 newly ordered for the Navy, with three indigenous weapons, Rudram-1, Astra Mk-1, and SAW, finalized as part of a 7 billion euro deal with France on April 28. 2025, the integration aims to boost self-reliance under the Atmanerber Bard initiative. French firm Dassault Aviation will support integration, though access to sensitive Rafale software remains a challenge. Tata will locally build fuselage parts by 2028, with an MRO hub planned in India. These weapons will replace older imports, enhance combat flexibility, and standardize armaments. India is negotiating greater software access, exploring joint integration solutions, to ensure long-term autonomy and upgrade capability.
As India nears final approval for its ISTER surveillance aircraft program, Canadian firm Bombardier has proposed its Global 8000 jet to the Indian Air Force. The ISTER initiative aims to enhance India's intelligence and battlefield monitoring capabilities along sensitive borders with Pakistan and China. The selected aircraft will integrate DRDO-developed sensors for real-time surveillance. Bombardier's jet, offering 14,800 km range and advanced avionics, is seen as a strong contender, though it must meet India's, make in India requirements, and undergo military customization. With service entry expected in 2025, Bombardier may partner with Indian firms like Tata to bolster its bid against competitors such as Boeing, as India looks to replace aging platforms and modernize aerial reconnaissance capabilities. India's defense sector marked a strategic shift with the development of the Zorwar light tank, jointly designed by DRDO and LNT, for high-altitude operations like in Ladakh. Named after General Zorwar Singh, the 25-ton tank emphasizes stealth and agility through a futuristic design with angular lines and advanced camouflage. Its compact, low-profile build aids maneuverability in mountainous terrain, while its modern aesthetics serve as both psychological deterrent and morale booster. The tank's sleek form also targets international defense markets, reflecting India's growing ambitions in arms exports. The project showcases innovation in composites and engineering, setting a new benchmark in merging visual appeal with combat functionality and redefining India's approach to indigenous defense manufacturing. India has highlighted its advancements in missile technology with proven supersonic systems like BrahMos, Astra, Shorya, and Rudram-1, while shifting its strategic focus toward hypersonic capabilities. The Rudram-2, a hypersonic air-to-surface missile with a speed of Mach 5.5, and the Shorya land attack missile mark key milestones. India, in collaboration with Russia, is developing the BrahMos-2 hypersonic cruise missile with an expected range of 1,500 kilometers and speeds up to Mach 8, a domestically developed hypersonic cruise missile using a scramjet engine, is also slated for testing. Amid these developments, Pakistan's acquisition of Chinese PL-15E missiles for its J-10C and JF-17 fighters, used during recent Sindhore operations, raised alarms due to their hypersonic speeds and advanced ASA radar systems. Some of these missiles, intercepted over Indian territory, are under analysis by DRDO, with international interest from allied nations. India aims to counter such threats through hypersonic interceptor programs like the Kusha project. Globally, nations including the US, Russia, China, and India are racing to master both offensive and defensive hypersonic missile systems. Experts suggest India must develop air-to-air -air missiles matching Mach 6 capability to counter regional threats and maintain strategic superiority. In a major step towards aerospace self-reliance, India is moving to create its own flying test bed for jet engine development. The DRDO's gas turbine research establishment, GTRE, has formally requested the Indian Air Force to allocate an Eliashan IL-76 aircraft for testing indigenous engines mid-air. The Ministry of Defense is working with the IF to acquire an older IL-76, aiming to end India's dependence on Russia's Gramov Flight Research Institute, where delays of 9 to 10 months often hamper progress. The Kaveri engine project, launched in the 1980s to power the LCA Tejas, had stalled due to technical challenges and sanctions, but is now being revived. A non-afterburning variant, the Kaveri derivative engine, producing 50 kN thrust, is scheduled for flight tests in 2025 and will power platforms like the Guttuk drone. This program is key to developing a 110 kN thrust engine for the upcoming fifth-generation AMCA fighter. The IL-76, known for its adaptability, will serve as an ideal platform for such tests. Defense experts have emphasized the need for a Kaveri 2.0 with over 100 kN thrust to meet future needs. 
The IF is expected to approve the proposal soon. In a major step toward strengthening India's air combat capabilities, Larsen and Tubro Defense has proposed a national consortium model for manufacturing the Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft, AMCA, India's first indigenous fifth-generation stealth fighter. On May 27, the Defense Minister approved the program's execution framework, paving the way for a collaborative approach between public and private sector firms. LNT's Executive Vice President Arun Ramchandani argued that such a consortium, similar to the Eurofighter Typhoon model, would streamline production, reduce delays, and leverage diverse industrial strengths. Designed by the Aeronautical Development Agency, ADA, the 25-ton twin-engine stealth fighter will feature radar-absorbing materials and internal weapon bays. The AMCA is a strategic response to India's shortfall in air squadrons, currently at 30, versus a sanctioned 42.5, and aims to meet the IAF's two-front threat scenario needs. Plans include five prototypes by 2031 and series production by 2035, targeting seven squadrons. The shift from HAL led manufacturing to open bidding allows private firms like LNT, Tata, Adani, and Godrich to co produce alongside HAL and Bard Electronics. The model is expected to foster innovation, distribute risk, and align with India's Atmanirbhar Bharat goals in aerospace self reliance. That's all from YKS team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.